Good day and welcome to the USD conference call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I'd like to turn the conference over to Mr. Dane Schaller. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you and hello, everyone. Welcome to the special USD conference call featuring USD President Dana White dialing in today from Sacramento and George St. Pierre, who's calling us today from Quebec. The flow of the call today is going to go as follows. We're going to take the first couple of questions for George if he does have an engagement to get to. So when we prioritize the questions, those questions will need to be for George. Uh, George will hang on the line for about 15 minutes, and when he's done, uh, questions can then be directed at Dana. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and open up for questions. Again, these questions should be uh, for George. But before we do that, I'm going to turn it over to George so that he can make an opening statement. George, welcome to the call. Thank you. George, did you want to go ahead and make your opening remarks, sir? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, sorry, I was, okay, I'm on the line. Sorry, I had a problem with the uh, with the phone. Yeah, um, when I'm here today, uh, I've talked with Dana and Lorenzo uh, about it. Um, been fighting for a long time. Uh, and uh, had 20, 22 fight in UFC. 15 of my fighters for world titles. Uh, I've been fighting a very long time for a high level. Uh, a lot of uh, it's a lot of pressure, a lot of criticism, uh, and, and uh, yeah, I'm, I decided uh, I decided I need to, I need to take uh, time off, and uh, I know UFC is a business, and uh, they can wait on for my little person, you know, for sure uh, they have they have to keep things rolling. So I I can't my title uh, for for the respect of the other compet competitor. And uh, one day, uh, when I feel like it, uh, I'm, 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 I might come back. But right now, I need uh, I need a break. Thank you, George. That's well, I, why, don't, why don't you say it in French too uh, for the, for the people on uh, in Canada that might? Yes. Uh, um, <clears throat> I talked with the to Dana. I, uh, sorry, and <laughs> French. Uh, I talked to Dana and Lorenzo. Um, uh, that's us. Uh, 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 J'ai 22 combats, j'ai aussi 15 de mes combats, c'est les combats championnats du monde. J'ai fait, ça fait longtemps que, que, que je suis sur le, le circuit du UFC et je combats de, à très haut niveau. Euh, durant toutes ces années, j'ai eu beaucoup de pression, beaucoup de critiques, beaucoup d'attentes. Et euh, euh, maintenant, il est à pour moi que je, que je prenne une pause parce que justement, c'est euh, pour garder ma santé mentale si on veut. Et euh, je dois j'ai pas eu une vie normale durant tout ce temps pour moi c'est le temps de, de vivre un peu ma vie normale et mm -hmm. de mettre des choses en place. Et euh, je mets mon tout de vacances. Pour le pour le respect des autres compétiteurs et euh, euh, parce que les UFC c'est une business et ils doivent continuer à rouler. Alors euh, euh, c'est important pour moi que je respecte ça. Donc euh, un jour quand ça va me tenter, si ça me tente de revenir, euh, je reviendrai euh, au lieu d'avoir des gars, des, euh, un sticker, un collant rouge sur mes gants, mais j'avais un collant bleu et je, je suis le, le challenger. Thank you, George. At this time, we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, it's star one for questions, and we'll kick things off with Kevin Ioli from Yahoo Sports. Hi, George. Um, can you tell me how long decision was it before UFC 167, or did the events of 167 precipitate this? No, it, it happened before. Uh, the problem is people don't understand is uh, the the situation that I that I am, that I am at. It's a lot of pressure. It's like every fight I'm carrying weight on my shoulder, and every 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 fight, uh, you know, it's like you add weight on your shoulder. You know, every fight you add weight, you add weight, and you add weight. And at one point, it becomes so heavy that I have a hard time carrying it myself. So for me, uh, right now to in order to keep my uh, mental equilibrium, you know, physically I'm a hundred percent. You know, I, I feel I'm still young and everything. I'm on top of the world. I feel, but it's mentally, I, 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 I just feel like I don't, I cannot, I cannot go to another training camp right now, and I don't know when I will be able to. So I don't want to make people wait for the uh, respect of the uh, the UFC. So I, it's important for me. I respect that they they they, they made me why, where where I am right now in the sport. So I I make my title. And one day I feel uh, I feel uh, ready. Uh, I'm gonna come back, and uh, instead of having a red sticker on my glove, I'm gonna be a blue blue sticker, and I'm, I'll be the 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 challenger. I claim the Everest. 
two, three times before when I lost to use to Sarah and after my injury. And if I have to do it a fourth time, believe me, I feel like I'm going to do it. George, um, you know, from the, you talked a little bit after 167 about, you know, you took some headshots and all that. Is, is part of this, even though you said your health is good, is part of it, you know, concern about the fact that you've taken, you know, you've taken some shots and, uh, and you, you are worried about your health? George, are you still on the line? Ashley, his line just is connected. Great. Okay, we'll work to get him reconnected. Uh, Kevin, we'll, uh, we'll obviously come back to that question if we can get him uh, back on the line. Can I ask Damien a question while we wait to get him back? What's your question? Just, your, you know, your reaction, Dana, to George's announcement and what you think you will do with the title now that, uh, obviously, uh, George won't be defending it. Yeah, I agree with George 100%. Listen, he, he sat down, talked to us, and said, you know, I have a lot of, I have a lot of personal issues I'm dealing with right now, and, and uh, you know, I can't even imagine going into another training camp. I'll, I'll, it'll drive me crazy and all these things. So I, I agree with him 100%. If you, if you are not – this isn't baseball or some sport where you go out and – this is fighting, man. If you, if you, you have to be 100% mental, physical, emotional – if you're not, you, you should sit out in the sidelines and wait until you get your, your, you know, your stuff cleared up. And and uh, I, I think it's the right move. And, and what do you do? You have any idea what you do with the title now? I do. Hello? There we go. There's George. Hey, sorry, sorry, guys. My phone, uh, my phone cut. I'm sorry. George, uh, go ahead, I'll, I'll just go. go ahead, I'll, I'll ask questions, ask Kevin. Yeah, I'll ask this last question and let somebody else get on. I was wondering, is I know you said that there are issues, your health is good, but did uh, your announcement today have anything to do with your concern about the abuse you've taken, you know, in your career? The, the what? The what you said? The, phys- the physical, you know, damage that you've sustained throughout your career. Oh no, 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 no! I'm, 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 I'm a hundred percent. I never felt better, uh, better physically. Like I said, it's. Uh, it's on me and mentally, you know. Like I said, it's just too, it's a lot of pressure, and and uh, for me, in order to keep my mental equilibrium, you know, like it's more and more emotionally, I, I need I need this, you know. Uh, I'm gonna take a break. Uh, I need this, you know. I need to put stuff in, in, in uh, put in, you know. No, it, it, I need to have a normal life for a bit, and uh, that's it. You know, I feel I'll feel better and come back stronger. You know. Thank you so much, George. Uh, congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. And we'll now move to Ariel Helwani. Hey, George. Uh, thank you for the time. Do you know what you're going to do with your life now that you're not an active fighter anymore? Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep training, keep improving, getting better. Um, things I have things to a lot of things to change, and. Uh, you know, live a, a little bit more of a normal life, and uh, <laughs> yeah, that's where that's how about it. You know. So, are, are you going to still be a part of TriStar and help those guys train? Will you still be? Um, yeah. Present at the yeah, of course. course, of course, of course. I, I, I will. I will. It's just that I, I won't have the, the pressure uh, of competing. You know, the problem with me, the guys, which made me the reason why that what made me champion, and the reason you know where I am. It's uh, my biggest quality, but it's also a big a big issue for me. I'm I'm completely upset about something. When they announce me for a fight, they say, "Oh, you're gonna fight that guy that date." I'm start right away thinking about it, and not only thinking like getting completely upset about it. I think about it con- constantly when I before I go to bed, when I eat, when I drive my car, when I train. It's completely crazy. So, so the fact that I don't that I don't have this thing. I'm gonna focus more on something else in my normal normal life. I'm gonna keep training because that's I'm a martial artist. That's what I do in my life, and get better. And then if I come back one day, I promise you I will get much better than I than I was now. I'm gonna fix things, make make myself stronger. And just uh, two quick follow-ups: Did you feel this way uh, in the cage at UFC 167, or did you decide that you were gonna do this in the last few weeks? No, I knew before. Like I said, I knew before I was going to 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 do this. It just built up over time. It built up after fight, after fight, after fight, after fight, until the point that I told myself, I 
said, you know what, uh, I need this. Uh, that's why, but I said, if you look at when I told you, can you give me the mic? I knew I was going to announce it. And, and but you know, the, normally, uh, you know, the way that fight finish and everything, it was a uh, controversy in part, you know, and, and Joe, Joe Rogan gave me the mic. I didn't know if it was a good timing to say it. That's why it looked a little bit awkward, but uh, uh, it didn't look good the way I said it. You know, I was hesitating. I don't know if I should have said it or not. It was bad timing. I, I shouldn't probably, but, uh, you know, I didn't have the word. I was very emotional and, and stuff, And but, uh, yeah, I, I knew before the fight I was going to, uh, it was going to happen, yeah. Okay, and you've never said the word uh, retirement throughout all of this, so what, what is your gut say? Do you think one day you will come back? Yeah, I believe one day I will come back. Uh, depending, is, is the problem is I don't know how long. Uh, I cannot put myself on another training camp right now. Uh, I, I feel like mentally I'm, I'm uh, I need a break. And uh, that's why, and I don't want to make nobody wait. I just uh, want to do it when I feel like it, and uh, will become stronger when I when I when I will, you know. And it, it you know, it's gonna be up to me. It has to be on my term, and it will make me stronger. And once again, that is star one. If you would like to ask a question, we'll now move to John Morgan. George, thanks for the time. Uh, you've mentioned the, the word criticism and the word pressure a couple of times, but you're saying that you, you still love martial arts and you're going to continue to train. So I wonder, what is it that you're trying to get away from? Is it is it to get away from the fans? Is it to get away from the media? I mean, what is it that you actually want to get away from? Uh, I love my sport. You know, to tell you the truth, I love my sport. And I've never been a, a victim. You know, I've never been a victim of anything. I choose this life, you know. I choose to do this. Nobody ever, ever forced me. But the problem is, as much as I choose it to do it, now I choose to not do it. You know, it's my right. I, I, I want, I, I'm allowed to do it. It's, I choose to not do it, you know, because I feel uh, mentally, you know, I'm, uh, it's a lot of pressure. Nobody can understand the situation that I, that I am at. It's been this all this pressure and all this weight I carry on my shoulder has been built up over a, a long time. People are like, oh, you only fight like maybe every four months. But what they don't understand is there's so much promotion going with it. Is the press store, the, the prime time, the camera, the this, the, the, the trash talking, the build up. Uh, everywhere I go in restaurant, as soon as I step out of my house now in Quebec, as a sport now, is popular. Everybody's like, hey, good luck for the fight. Hey, the fight this. Hey, the fight that. Hey, what are you going to do to that guy? They talk about me, about this all the time, and it's completely insane. It, every day of my life, is it's like that. So nobody can understand uh, this pressure. You know, it's hard to explain. But, uh, yeah, uh, what I try to run away from it, it's all that pressure and everything uh, about that. And right now I need to uh, need, uh, take a pause uh, and... I will make me strong and then go back to my thing, have some project in my mind, and it's going to make me stronger. Yeah, I can understand that. What about, you know, you said you may come back. Do you know what it's going to take? I mean, certainly it's difficult for you to know until you've been there, but is there a trigger? Is there something that you're waiting, like a mental state or a feeling? I mean, No, no that, 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 if, if I give you a date, I immediately put me back into a date, into pressure, into, uh, you know, I'm going to start thinking about it. It has to be on my term. I don't know when. I don't know if. I don't know. You know, I think I will. You know, I can't say 100%, you know. and But right now, I don't. I just don't. I don't I don't want the people thinking about me. I know a lot of guys are going to be like, oh, I want to fight St. Pierre because he has a lot of pay-per-view buy, you know, and I want to make money. You know, I understand that. Everybody's in for the business. But I'm just tired of this right now. I need a break and get away from it. And uh, if one day I decide to go back, when I feel like it, I will be stronger, I promise. And we'll now move to Jess Wagenheim. Similar to the question that was just asked, but I'm about about your the possibility of you coming back. But I'm wondering if, if if you know of some things that you actively will be able to do during your time off that will prepare you for um, for a possible comeback. Because if you do come back and you come back strong you talk about being physically strong. Um, and if you come back and win the championship again, the, the whole the whole thing will start over again. If you, if you're not prepared for it to, to, to be different, so have you have you thought about what kinds of things you need to do during this time to prepare yourself? 
No, it's uh, like I said. It, it, a lot of this thing is part of my of my personal life. I keep my personal life personal, and uh, that's it. That's all, you know. And uh, I need uh, I need to do stuff, you know. And uh, that that's that's personal. And we'll now move to Peter Tardis. Salut, Georges. Uh, I'd like uh, I'd like for you to explain just how this vacant title is going to work. I mean, if ever one day you decide to come back, what's the scenario? What, what's what's going to happen? I don't know. Uh, if one day I decide, one day I decide to come back, I'm going to, of course, have a talk with Dana and Lorenzo. Uh, and then after the talk, uh, it, it's going to be up to them. If I have to, uh, if I need to uh, prove myself again and have a couple of fights before going for a title shot, I will be ready to do it. And if I go straight away for a title shot, I will be re- ready either. Um, mixed martial art is that's, that's, that's a sport that I love. That's what I do best in life. And regardless, whatever they tell me to do, I will be ready to do, to do it. Whoever they tell me to fight, I will be ready to do it. If I decide to come back, I will be to do everything, be back on top of, on top of the, of the game. And will be my decision, and, uh, and when I decide, and if I decide, I will be ready to do every uh, everything uh, that it will take to get me there. Well, it will just it will just make me feel good too. You know, I've been I've been on top for so long, so everybody is looking at me and like I'm the target. You know, right now it's gonna make me feel good. That guy fight each other, you know, so I'm out of the equation. And if one day I come back, I will be the one that will look up to the, the guy on, on, on top of the mountain and try to claim it. And uh, it's just, you know, it's going to make, it's going to, I need, I need this time, this time off. And we'll now move to Mike Chiappetta. Hi, George. First of all, uh, congratulations to you on your decision. I just want to wish you good luck, whatever happens in the future. Uh, beyond that, I wanted to ask, you know, you, you talked about the pressure and the weight and, and, and everything that goes along with being the champion. Did you feel as though all of that was actually affecting you once you got in the cage as well, in the, maybe in the training room or, or in the cage when you competed? Like I said, it's been a long time I wanted to do this. It built up on my shoulder. Uh, training camp after training camp, uh, things that I want to do, personal thing to do and I keep my personal life personal my life it's a freaking zoo right now and that's it I need to go to go to my thing and take a break and uh, that's all I can say I'm sorry I'm like a tape recorder <laughs> it makes me laugh but I know you guys trying but you're not gonna get anything personal out of me that's it that's all all right, guys, I'm going to jump in here. We're going to take our last question for George St. Pierre from Dave Deaver from Post Media News. Go ahead, Dave. We've got time for one question. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Thanks, George. Um, if uh, if you don't come back, and if this is it, are you uh, are you content uh, with uh, with the legacy that you leave um, in Cage in terms of your record, records you've set, and as a uh, as a draw for the company? Are you are you content with uh, with what you leave? I'm content. Uh, a lot of things I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to be the great, the greatest. And also, I said, uh, I said before, uh, what I wanted to do, I wanted to do things to be remembered. You know, I wanted to do things to be remembered, uh, to make a difference in the sport, to make the sport reach another level. I'm trying to do it uh, during my last fight. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Maybe uh, the people were not ready for it. And uh, unfortunately, uh, that's I tried my best. I tried to do everything possible, and uh, yeah. But you know, we'll see if I come back or not. Uh, I'll think I have a lot of time, time to think about it. We'll see. George, it's Dana. Thanks, buddy. We really appreciate it. Have a good day. You're good to go. Thank you very much. All right. All right, guys. Uh, uh, let me start off by saying. Like I said, I think this is the right move for George St. Pierre. I mean, you can hear by, by listening to him, he's got a lot of issues personally that he needs to deal with, and uh, no doubt this is the right move. So what we're going to do is March 15th, Dallas, Texas, Johnny Hendricks will fight Robbie Lawler for the vacant welterweight title. Who has the first question? Let's go ahead and go to uh, Ron Cross from Inside MMA. Go ahead, Ron. 
Thanks, Dave. Uh, Dana, I, I was waiting for George, but I will ask you this. Um, that's a great, great uh, way to, to get this title moving again. Did George, did you have any clue, Dana, leading up to this? I mean, I spoke to him 24 hours before the fight, and he said he still loved his job. He loved the training process. Did this, did you have any clue that this was coming? He does love his job. He does love the training process. He's got a lot of personal issues that he needs to deal with. There's things personally that he needs to deal with before he can uh, even come close to mentally focusing on uh, fighting again. But did he approach you before that and, and Lee give you any indication that he was going to drop that bomb to Joe Rogan? Well, we knew. We knew that something, you know, that something was going on with him. But the one thing that I, you know, George St. Pierre has always been, you know, he's, he's always been 100% professional. I couldn't say enough good things about him. I, you know, it, it, it is what it is. It's not like there was any, I don't know. It's, 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 it's actually, at the end of the day, it's really not that big of a deal. The guy's got some things that he needs to deal with. Um, he was classy enough to say, I'm not going to jam up the 170-pound division while I deal with these things. And I'm, I'm going to uh, step aside and handle my stuff, and then I'll be back. Very good. Thank you. Kevin Ioli with Yahoo Sports. Dana, um, if you could comment on what you think George's legacy as a MMA fighter would be, first of all. And secondly, do you think that maybe of all his great accomplishments, you know, doing what he's doing, there's a lot of pressure on a guy to, you know, walk away like this when he's at the top of his game. Do you think that that sets a standard for the way guys should handle their careers? Um, well, the guy's been here forever. You know what I mean? This isn't some guy. It's not like it's not like John Jones, the guy who just burst out of the scene, is walking away now to deal with some stuff. I mean, he's been here forever. Jordan's been here forever. He's been an absolute professional in everything that he's done, in the way that he's carried himself right up until this move here. Um, you know, I mean, his legacy, is, he's the greatest welterweight ever. Um and as far as, as working with us, there's nobody better. If I had 475 guys like George St. Pierre, my life would be a lot easier. And I, I, I don't know if maybe I, I misunderstood your answer or you misunderstood my second part of the question, but I'm saying, you know, this is a good thing that he did. If you're having problems, you know, you should walk away. And, you know, George has always been a leader in things he done, he's done. And I wonder if you say that this is an example to, you know, fighters, boxers, and MMA fighters of, of how I, to handle it when you're having problems. Yeah, yeah no, he, he is the, the gold standard in everything and how to, you know, you can tell. I mean, you guys can just tell by, by his tone of voice and, and the way that he's talking and he's kind of tiptoeing around the real issue here that he has these personal problems uh, that he's dealing with, yet, yet he handles everything like a professional, you know? He really does. And I have one last question for you. You know, at that press conference, which was one of the most amazing press conferences I had ever been to, you know, you went out to talk to him briefly, and you came back, and I think, you know, to characterize what you said, you know, it seems like a big deal to him now, but it's not that big a deal in the scope of things. Did you learn anything different uh, in addition to what you learned that night that makes you now understand his position better? No, it's just he, he, he has the – George St. Pierre is what, I mean, you can, again, you can tell by the way he talks that his, the, the, his issues he's dealing with outside the octagon are driving him nuts. He's obsessing about them, and, and, and it's driving him crazy. So, you know, he's at a point where he's like, I just have to deal with these things first. Before I, he, said, he said, if I go into another training camp with these things on my mind, I, I, I won't be focused. It will drive me insane, and I'll have a horrible camp. Okay. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. And we'll now move to Luis LaRiviere with TVA Sports. Looks like uh, Luis may have dropped off the line, so why don't we go ahead to uh, Dave Meltzer from MMA Fighting. So, operator, if you could put Dave Meltzer in the queue, that'd be great. Hello? Please call her, please go ahead. Hi, Dave. Hey, hey Dana. Um, I mean, the one question I saw, I was wanted to ask this to George, and I don't know if you even know the answer, but do you know any kind of like a, you know, he was talking about it was before this, this last fight. I mean, do you know of like a time frame, kind of when the trigger went off with him that that he needed to get out? I mean, was it, 
Was it before the Diaz fight? Was it after the Diaz fight? Was it just in leading up to this fight? I mean, did he kind of give you any indication that... Yeah, you know, it, was, it was leading up to this fight. It was, it, was the, it was the camp for the Johnny Hendricks fight. Okay. And and as far as, like, um, you know, the, the, the pick, obviously, Hendricks was going to have to be in the fight. And um, Lawler, you know, is obviously one of the top guys that you would consider. Was there any reason... Lawler over, you know, and I guess the only other real choice, I guess, would be Condit when I was kind of looking at, at, at prospective, uh, you know, s- scenarios. Um, I mean, was there a... Well, not scenarios. Not scenarios. If you look at the rankings. Yeah. If you look at the rankings, you got you got uh, Condit, and then you got Lawler. So right. Those are the top two guys. So, Condit just had a shot at the title uh, against George, and just had a shot at Johnny Hendricks. So, Robbie Lawler just beat... Robbie Lawler just beat the guy that... Everybody wanted to see fight George St. Pierre. Not to mention the fact that there's no doubt that the Robbie Lawler Johnny Hendricks fight is going to be an absolute gunfight. Oh yeah. Okay, that's what I was uh, just kind of and, checking. And out. I'm working. I'm working on something else for Carlos Condit. That hopefully Condit will be on that card too. Um, I sh- hopefully I have this thing buttoned up Saturday or Monday. On, on Condit, is, is Matt Brown a possibility for Condit, or is it? Or are you looking in a different direction? A different direction. Now, now, that the, now that the title is vacant, I think we need to go in a different direction. Okay, and uh, what about uh, Nick Diaz at this point? Is there any talk of Nick Diaz, or is it the same situation it's been? As far as I know, Nick Diaz is retired. Okay, all right. All right, thanks. Okay, thanks. And we'll now move to John Morgan with USA Today. Thank you. Dane, obviously you're being very supportive of George's decision, but uh, can I ask, like, what clicked with you? What changed? I mean, obviously the night of 167, you, you felt certain that he'd be back and it was no big deal and he could work through it. And now you're saying, no, no, the guy's making the right choice. He's taking the time off. So what changed uh, between then and now? Um, no, nothing changed. I mean, obviously, I, I, I made it very clear I was pretty emotional that night. You know, I think everybody was emotional that night. And, uh, you know, we sat down and talked and it's absolutely, listen, in the, in the history, I, I actually go to guys and ask them to retire when I, when I don't think that they're right to fight. I literally go to guys and say, we should probably talk about, you know, the, 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 the next chapter of your life or what we're going to do, this or that. You know, when, when a guy comes and says that he's uh, having issues and, and he, he literally can't focus, and you, you, can't, you can't be in this sport when that's the case. Yeah, and obviously, I mean, the, the show goes on regardless of the fighter, but how does this affect you? I mean, you made it very clear over the past few years that, you know, George is the number one guy, man. He's the biggest draw. He's the biggest pay-per-view guy. You know, how does that affect you as a businessman when, when, when that guy's gone? Same questions everybody asked me about Chuck Liddell and Chuck Liddell's going to leave. What are you guys going to do when Chuck Liddell leaves? He's the biggest pay-per-view star you have and yada, 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 yada. You know, life goes on. Great, thanks, Dan. Yep. And we'll now move to Ivan Roth with Global.com. Uh, hi, Dana. Uh, I, I want to listen to uh, uh, your opinion about this. You talked to George. Uh, if, if he had lost to Hendricks, do you think his decision would be the same? That's a good question. That's a really good question. I, I, I would have to say yes. I would have to say yes that, that, that it would be the same because uh, – you know, it, it has nothing to do with fighting. It's just personal uh, stuff he's dealing with. Okay. Uh, and, and, George, and, and, and George wants to, wants to be the greatest of all times. In which way does this decision affect his goal? I don't think it does. I mean, how about this? How about George St. Pierre? He's already the best welterweight ever, right? Now he takes yeah. his time off. He deals with his personal problems. We have a new champion. The champion defends his title once or twice, and George St. Pierre comes back and tries to win it again. And if he's able to do that, I mean, it's just another epic moment in his career. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll now move to Richard Hunter with KRLD FM Radio Dallas. Yeah. Hi, Dana. Uh, having been there at the UFC 167 press conference myself and just kind of recounting the events of the night, you know, the, George said today essentially the same thing that he said in the cage. And then we all know the, the press conference that ensued after that. But, you know, as I recall, 
you were upset, and then when you went back to talk to him, you came back and, without giving a lot of details, told us that you know you felt much better about it and you thought everything was going to work out. So my question is, from that night to today, did you have any different uh, understanding? Did you think that that it was resolved to the point that George was going to fight again, or have you known? Yeah. So that night, you know, I, I just said to a guy a few minutes ago, you know, I was uh, I was really emotional. That- and it was more that, that night was more than just what George St. Pierre said. There were there were a lot of things. There were there was a lot of uh, how, how do I say this? I just I, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Um, but you know there, there was some uh, there was some battling going on with, with me and and uh, and and, uh, and Nevada. I would say you know what I mean. So there, there was more to it than just. I blew up and went crazy because of George St. Pierre and what he said. But, uh, no, I, I wouldn't say that, you know, that night when I talked to him, he, he and I came back to you guys and said everything's, uh, everything is uh, not as bad as it seems. But, but to him, you know, he's going crazy. I mean, you can tell just by the way he's talking and his voice, he's got these issues that he needs to deal with. And uh, once he deals with them, he can focus on training and, and, and being a fighter again. Did I answer your question? And actually, yes, he, yeah, his line disconnected. So now we'll move okay. to Gareth Davies with Tel- Telegraph in London. Hello, good evening, gentlemen. Dana, um, you, you told me a couple of weeks ago that you, you felt that GSP would fight again and that he would defend the, the belt. Um, so, so when was that decision made between you, Lorenzo, and GSP? Has that come in the last few days? And have you been trying behind the scenes to persuade GSP to stay on and have a think about it for a few months and then make a decision? Has it just come about in the last few days, really? I would never tell a guy in the sense I'm not mentally focused and emotionally there right now to, to compete. And, and, and George St. Pierre will compete again. Yes, I do believe that George St. Pierre will fight again. So, you know, you guys ask me questions that I always can't give you all the answers to. Absolutely. No, no, that was really actually my next question was, is your gut feeling, you know what fighters are like. They go away, they have a rest, they see someone else doing what they really want. Um, They solve their problems and they come back. And very often fighters, certainly in boxing, come back for money um, in many cases. But is your gut feeling then the GSP will see what goes on in front of him for the next 10 months or, or a year, and then we'll come back and fight again. Well, I've made it very clear to you guys like a zillion times, and I cannot express to you enough how bad George St. Pierre does not need money. <laughs> George yeah. St. Pierre has a lot of money. Um, and he could. He could walk away forever if that's what he chose to do. I, I, I honestly don't believe that he will do that. I think he will come back. He needs to... He's to button up some things in his personal life, and then you'll see him again. Many thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll now move to Karen Bryant with MMA Heat. Thanks for uh, taking the time. I know a lot of my questions have already been answered, but um, Dana, I was curious. You know, I know you always talk about people. Um, you know, asking you for certain fights, and I know we talked about the rankings and who's available, but, you know, Robbie Lawler is somebody who's so low-key. I'm just curious how that conversation went with him, his reaction to knowing that he was going to be fighting for the title, and exactly a little bit more about why you did decide to, to go with Robbie. Yeah, I, uh, well, I thought, I, the reason I went with Robbie is because Carlos Condit already had a shot at the title with George, and then, you know, just fought Johnny Hendricks and, and lost, uh, so Robbie Lawler was the next guy in line. So Lawler will get that fight, and uh, Condit hopefully will fight on that card too. I'm, I'm trying to work that out as we speak. And how did they react? Johnny Hendricks went absolutely crazy, and uh, Robbie Lawler went about as crazy as Robbie Lawler can go. <laughs> Well, it's interesting, too, when you talk about something uh, fun for Carlos Condit. I mean, when you look at the rankings, most people are tied up now. So what 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 does fun mean? Well, I'm working on it. As soon as I as soon as I get it done, I'll let you guys know. Hopefully, I can. Get all right. It well, and lastly, just you know, you've mentioned how, and we all know, obviously, that George has been there so long. Just, I'm curious about your thoughts on 
the idea that we are getting new blood, you know, at the, at the top of the division and, and what that might do for you. Obviously, we know that Georgia is such a draw, but at the same time, you might be able to make the argument that having all this new blood in there adds new excitement to the division. Well, yeah, I mean, th- th- this is this is the way sports work. I mean, it's the way the fight game works. You know, uh, guys don't hold belts forever. Guys don't stay champions forever. Um, and, and, you know, new guys go in there. New fights happen. This is this is life. This is sports. This is the way that it works. But I was saying, you jumped in. I was saying, hopefully I can get this thing done um, Saturday, and maybe I'll have an answer for you guys at the press conference Saturday night. Or if not, I can get it done by Monday. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll now take a follow-up from Mike Chiapetta. Uh, most of my questions have been answered, Dana, but I, I just have two quick ones. The first is, why is GSP's retirement, why does that affect, um, like, Mac Brown in the sense that you said, you know, you need to go in a new direction for Conant now? Well, why is that? That didn't affect Matt Brown that way. Matt Brown has a couple of herniated discs. That's no joke. You know, I'm not, I'm not pressuring or looking for Matt Brown to come back anytime soon. Matt Brown is, is hurt. Mm-mm. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um, and um, just to be, just to clarify, uh, John Jones and Glover Chair, are they still the main events of the Dallas card, or no? John Jones and Glover Chair, yes. They are still the main event, okay. All right, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll now move to Brian Oswald with Bleacher Report. Go ahead, Brian. That, that was actually my question about John Jones versus Glover. Just wanted to confirm if it was still the main event. Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. We'll now move to Jay Jenauer with Global Sports. Dana, first off, best of the holiday season to you. Um, two questions. One is, you talked about the fight that we're going to see between Hendricks and, and Lawler. How much does this change the UFC landscape with what's going to happen in the welterweight uh, division? I mean, we all know, and you call GSP the, the greatest welterweight ever. You know, if anything, he's not a guy who's going to stand there and slug it out every fight. But now it seems like, as you said, you got guys who are going to go in there and get it all the time. How different is this welterweight division going to be? Well, I, I mean, I don't know how much difference it's going to be. All these guys were here uh, before, too, when George St. Pierre was here. But, um, you know, and, and I, I, I kind of get the reference that, that you're putting out there. But, I mean, if you talk about George St. Pierre's style, I mean, he's, the guy is still so popular. And, and people love the guy and love to watch him fight. And his events are, are huge. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Obviously, as a fight fan myself, personally, I, I, I love the uh, – I love the Waller Hendricks fight. It's going to be an absolute, you know, it's going to be a gunfight. It's going to be a dog fight. It's going to be, you know, these, these guys are the type of guys, both good wrestlers, both heavy punchers, both knockout power. It's, it's going to be awesome, man. This, this is like a, like a Hagler Hearns fight. You know, as far as the accolades go, we all know how much GSP has meant to the UFC. And, you know, you talk about, well, who's going to be, you know, taken over those reins, but how important has GSP been to the UFC? I mean, we've, we've seen what he's done for our country here in Canada. We've seen what he's like when he goes around the world, but can you really say how, you know, how solid he has been for your organization, Dana? Yeah, it's funny because he said, I, uh, he said, I wanted to change the sport. I wanted to, uh, you know, help elevate the sport. And, 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 and he did that. He did that big time, not just in Canada, not just in the United States, but all over the world. And Dana, lastly, there's a lot of crap that always gets spewed on Twitter, the internet rumors and all the rest. And I know GSP likes to keep his personal life personal, but, you know, as far as the, you know, impregnating a woman, the family stuff, I mean, do you think all of this kind of stuff factors into the mental stress that it seems like he was under about the whole pressure? Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt that kind of stuff, you know, that kind of stuff starts to drive you crazy. I mean, you, 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 you can try to uh, isolate himself from it, and but, you know, he still hears it. It still happens, and he's going. You know, listen, the guy's been champ forever. He, you know, he's a mentally strong guy. <laughs> he's just he's got to deal. He's got to deal with it's like, uh, you know, it's like when he's talking about. He's like, if I was going to fight again, I'd have to go back into camp again soon. I can't go to camp. It's like when you just come home from a trip, right? 
you've been on vacation for two weeks. And you just got home and you got to be to work tomorrow, but you got a ton of shit that you got to do. You got to handle and take care of stuff, you know, whether it's your laundry or you've got some laundry to take care of. You've got some stuff that he needs to take care of. He doesn't have to worry about going to camp or making any press appearances or doing anything for the UFC. Uh, he can just focus 100% on his personal life, get his laundry done, and then jump back into the, uh, into the, uh, into the game. And lastly, Dan, are you any close to jumping back here to Vancouver? It's, it's been a few years since we've seen you guys here. I mean, you know how this market is. In, any, any progress for 2014 or 2015? I love Vancouver, man, and I can't wait to get back up there. Uh, not, not just to do a fight, but I love the city. It's, a, it's an amazing city, and, yeah, we'll, we'll be there as soon as, as we possibly can. All the best, and have a good Christmas. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. We'll now take a follow-up from Ariel Helwani. Uh, Dana, you know, at the end, and you, you just referred to uh, this in, in your last answer, but at, at the end of uh, GSP's portion of the call, he said that, you know, I tried to do something to change the sport, and it, it didn't really happen. And it, it sounds like that was everything that he was doing with Bata. And, you know, leading up to the fight, he was saying that uh, he, he felt like the UFC didn't stand by him. Did he ever tell you that that was one of the reasons why that he felt like he tried to change the sport, it didn't work, and he had, he had enough of the whole thing? No. That never no. came up? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Um, you're looking at 2014 with no GSP. Uh, Pettis had surgery yesterday. Kane had surgery on Tuesday. Does any of that uh, scare you at all? No. That doesn't scare me at all. This is what we do for a living. This is what we do. If that scares me, I'm in big trouble. And uh, just one last one. Um so th there are some fighters, you know, like Kane and Pettis, they have surgeries. They're out for almost a year. Um, why did you, you know, not just let him, you know, you say he's like a guy who's coming back from a trip and the laundry and all that. Just to have him around as an active fighter, it, you know, it means a lot. Why Why not just do like an interim belt or something like that? Why does he have to actually drop the title if he keeps coming back? Because he's going to handle this stuff. Who knows how long it's going to take. And he was just out for over a year. He was just out for over a year with ACL surgery. It's the right thing to do. Okay, thanks. Yep. Well, now we have to John Oregon with Fighters Only Magazine. Hello. Hello. I'm here. Hello. Hi, that's a question for Dana. Um, yeah, just regarding the contractual side, obviously you have like, uh, you know, contractual obligations on both sides with all your fighters about, you know, appearances and times they have to be offered fights and this and that. Is GSP, like, on a contract freeze now when he says he might be away for a year? Does that mean that his contract is formally suspended for a period of 12 months, or how does the whole thing work? Yeah, yeah, it's contract, it's contract freezes. And uh, you kind of touched on this a little bit. How do you feel that GSP's hiatus is going to affect Canadian market penetration? Um, yeah, obviously, you know, in GSP fights, we, we do uh, amazing buys in Canada. Um, but GSP will fight a couple times a year, you know. It's just, mm -hmm. uh, that's, listen, when we went through the whole thing when Chuck Liddell and many other fighters, you know, started to retire. It's like, oh, no, what are these guys going to do now? They're in big trouble now. Da, 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 da. I mean, we hear this stuff all the time. It's like a, it's like a broken record. Mm -hmm. This is the business that we're in. This is what we do. You've seen a lot of big stars emerge over the years. Obviously, you've seen GSP come up through the ranks from what he started to what he became. Like, you've got a lot of your champions out of action next year, but who have you got your eye on who you think could emerge as a big star over the next 12 months? Uh, I don't know. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Who could emerge? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what. Guys live, guys live fight to fight. Let me give you an example. Uh, when we did the Alexander Gustafsson fight with Jones, um, everybody said, ah, oh, this fight's crazy. This guy doesn't deserve the fight. Yada, 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 yada. Now, all anybody can talk about is who stops them fighting Jones, and that's what they want to see again. Uh, Antonio Bigfoot Silva and, and, and uh, Mark Hunt went into Australia last weekend, and, you know, they were the main event. You know, good fight, interesting fight. Blew the door. I mean, that's all, that's all I talked about for four days. That's all anybody talked about. You know, it's just, this is the fight business. Tomorrow night, on Fox here in Sacramento, these guys are going to go out there 
and Monday morning, everybody's going to be talking about somebody. Okay, well, so thank you, Dana. Thank you. And we'll now move to Carlos Contreras with Millennium. Um. And I just uh, wanted to ask you about, uh, well, I mean, uh, it's pretty much about the, the contract, uh, the contract issue that I already talked. Is he a free, a free agent? Is there a, a time frame for you to, to ask him to come back? Or is he gonna have to, uh, have a new contract ever if he comes back in a year or two years? Yeah, if George St. Pierre stays out for six months or six years, his contract is frozen. So when he comes back, his contract will start again with his first fight. Oh, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Thank you. We'll now take a follow-up from Kevin Ioli. Hey, David, I just want to ask you very quickly. Uh, is it fair to say that George's two fights this year were your two best pay-per-view performances of uh, 2013? I'll find point? out that information for you and let you know. I, I don't know the answer to that, but I'll find out. But I would have to say yes. I mean, it's definitely not the two worst. Or the two, well, Chris, the two somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? Well, Chris, I would Chris, find out Anderson. specifically for you. Okay, thank you. And we'll now take a question from Dave Seltzer with MMA Fighting and Wrestling Observer. Yeah, you know, um, George always uh, would say that, that his goal was to be the greatest ever. And he's certainly in, you know, when you – Talk about the greatest ever. He's in the conversation and right at the top of the conversation. How do you think that this may or may not affect that choice in the sense that, you know, he, he retired after a long championship reign, but, you know, Anderson, Anderson Silva obviously had a very long reign, although he lost at the end of it. And uh, I'm not asking you to choose one or the other, but how do you feel in the sense, I guess maybe I am asking you that. You know, I mean, what, what do you see as far as like the, you know, his, his goal to be the greatest of all time, um, obviously, I you know I think we'd all agree he's the greatest welterweight of all time, but greatest of all time. What are kind of your thoughts on that? Well, it's tough. It's tough to uh, it's tough to tell. I mean, I think that uh, I mean you know what I think of Anderson Silva. Uh, first of all, second of all, it, 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 the story isn't isn't finished yet. I mean, the guy's going to go deal with this stuff. If he comes back and whoever the champion is, whatever happens in between. And he comes back and wins again, then defends the title a bunch of times, then retires uh, in their streak. Who knows? I, I think because he's walking away, uh, it's just it's just you know, it's like you put a bookmark in it, and we wait to see how this story ends. You're you I mean, from your talk, you're kind of going. I, I, I sense that you're going with the idea that you don't know when it's going to happen. But, you know, he's, he's going to be back. He's going to be challenging for the championship once this hurdle, this mental hurdle gets through, and, and it's not the end of the George St. Pierre story then. Exactly. Okay. Okay, thanks. All right, so I'm going to wrap this thing up. I want to thank everybody. Uh, for those of you that aren't going to be here uh, tomorrow night in Sacramento, I, want, uh, I just want to say happy holidays to you and your family, and hopefully I will see you all December 28th in Las Vegas for uh, Silva versus Weidman. Thank you guys very much. Have a great day.